Can I sit down? Yeah, please. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. You're coming from a very interesting state, Arunachal Pradesh. Yes. Hmm? Definitely, very interesting. Ah, which part of Arunachal Pradesh? Uh, Itanagar. Itanagar, there is a twin, uh, twin city called Itanagar and Nahalagun. Ah, there, yes. uh, there is basically geographically little attached. Ah. So it is called Twin City. So I'm from Nahalagun. Ah, okay. Close proximity to Itanagar. Ah, okay. And uh, how uh, how is the region where you are? Uh, bomb, it's, it's, it's agriculture or forestry. Or Sir, it is quite rich. Uh, yeah. Aesthetic uh, beauty is there. Okay. As far as your environmental things are concerned, yeah. as far as greenery is concerned, it yeah. is quite beautiful. And I am being from there, I am a little bit biased also. I feel it is the heaven on earth. Okay. My personal opinion. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. And do you like football? Yes, sir, definitely. Oh, okay. I am passionate about football. Okay. Who is your favorite player? Uh, I don't have any favorite player, but uh, I follow Barcelona as a club. Oh, okay. Uh, are you a fan of Messi? Uh, yeah, I like Messi. Uh, I appreciate him as a footballer. Uh, but I don't have any specific liking to any footballer. Uh, so, who in your opinion is the greatest footballer in the world? In my opinion, if I see practically of what I have seen, uh, I think Messi. Okay. Uh, if I assess all the footballers in the county. How does his technique, his skill and play differ from that of say Cristiano Ronaldo? Sir Cristiano Ronaldo, I feel he is very direct. Mm. He is more of a, uh, a striker rather than a, rather than a complete footballer. Mm. Uh, Messi on the other hand, like he can dribble, he can pass, he can. Uh, his uh, his vision is unmatched. He is like one of the greatest in terms of finding vision and spaces. For that reason, I feel. Uh, Messi is a little bit different, in fact completely different and he is more of a team player also, Messi. And which states in India uh, have more fascination for football? Uh, sir, uh, what I have seen and what I have been through, I think Kerala, Bengal, Goa and uh, all of the Northeast. Uh, Mumbai, the culture is also there. Uh, but suppose you join IAS and you become Secretary for Sports Department. Yes. Sir. What would you do to improve football in India? Sir, first and foremost, the cultural identity regarding football has to change. People need to say, uh, needs to see football as an opportunity for an uh, for an economic way of life, as a settled way of life. The parents need to encourage their kids. So, first and foremost, I would like to uh, increase awareness about the utility of the game not from the physical health perspective but also from uh, your uh, from economic perspective that it gives an economic opportunity it has given to many footballers around the world in fact in india also uh, in quite recently the footballers are like they are starting to earn money well, arunachal pradesh is close to china yes sir how do you see china for our foreign policy so, uh, that's why enemy or? So, enemy, that is a very radical term to use, uh -huh. especially in the cu current geopolitical context. Uh -huh. Because uh, if uh, we see diplomatically using term like enemy, I don't think that is quite right. Uh -huh. But then as far as our foreign policy is concerned, China is very important, both as a detractor and as a friend also. Because we share a very, a very high economic relationship with China. It is closing around 100 billion dollars. Uh, economic partnership. Then uh, how we have border issues also, which uh, if, uh, we have to mitigate amicably with China. If we are able to do so, then it offers great opportunity for us. Then again, uh, the, this is the time that it is said that 21st century is for both India and China. So the two nations, if they are able to grow together, then that would be the greatest thing possible for both the countries. So in that regard, China is China is like. Uh, it's one of the most important part of our foreign policy. Good. What do you think of this trade war between China and US? China and US, uh, sir, uh, in the post WTO world, I think this is not right. This is not good for the growing economies, especially like uh, ours, wherein our economy like it is growing right now. And a trade war between two of the biggest economy, it only offers bad things for us, for us, and also put puts us in a puts us in a bracket wherein we have to take a pick a side, which uh, which in our uh, in our in our capacity is not the right thing to do.
especially when we are growing in such a at such a high pace. But how do you look at the arguments of Donald Trump? Uh, is he justified in uh, waging this trade war against China? So if, if he is justified or not, if I look from India's perspective, no, you look at from the American point. American perspective. I think from the, if you look at from the American perspective, I think uh, he is well within his rights to seek the interests of his people if it serves the interests of the people. He, he is well within his right, and his, uh, USA is a sovereign. But what is his complaint? Why is he using this war? I think there is trade imbalance because uh, more imports from China and less export. And China, like in over the years, like they have taken over their exports. Their export, China is exporting more and importing less. So their complaint is that trade imbalance is too much. And because of this, uh, the people in the in their country is losing job. That is his argument. Okay, thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, so you graduated in 2013. Yes, sir. So, have you been working since last five or six years? Sir, like uh, I have been in business on and off. Yeah. Uh, in between, when uh, after writing my main series, like I get into business. Okay. What? Uh, can you please elaborate? What kind of business? Uh, sir, like uh, restaurants. See, North and Asian states have their own administrative challenges. Yes, sir. Uh, can you please elaborate? Sir, administrative challenges. Uh, uh, the whole of the Northeast. So administrative, the biggest factor is the language and the cultural factor is the biggest uh, roadblock because any administrative, especially all India services uh, ca candidates uh, coming to the state, first they have to be acquired, acquainted with the culture, cultural setup and the landscape and everything. By the time they are acquainted, they are transferred. Because of the less time and less understanding of the place, the administrative works are delayed. And also the communication is a big problem because uh, from re uh, reaching from one village to the, the town is a, is a gigantic task, especially for administrators and communicating from one centre to the other. And this uh, telecommunication is also not very well developed. <coughs> that is also one of the major factors. Uh, why is Citizenship Amendment Act in use these days? Uh, so because uh, uh, it seeks to provide uh, rather Earlier, the, any illegal Im immigrant who was seeking citizenship in the country, they have to be there for 12 years. After 12 years, they can apply. So it has been cut down to six years, but that is not a big problem. The problem is that like, it is specifically for certain communities, from uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh. So the, the, your, any, the movement is against that specific provision. NRC, sir, NRC is based on the Assam Accord, which was accepted in 1980. I'm not sure of the date, 1985, like this. So, uh, by which it was said that 1971, 24 March would be cut off date, wherein uh, people after coming uh, after that date coming to or uh, migrating or illegally immigrating to Assam would be transported back. So, this exercise under the uh, ISO Supreme Court is to identify those illegal immigrants who have entered after 24th March 1971. Who are Rohingyas? Rohingyas are uh, minority Muslims uh, from Myanmar, Rakhin, I think Rakhin state. So what's the issue? Uh, it is said that they are being persecuted, persecuted by the majority Buddhist community, community under the uh, auspices of the regime. Okay, and what do you think so? Sir, I think that, that is very wrong in a world that we live today. I think any community, whatever whatever the reason may be, being persecuted to such a such an extent that they are made to flee their home, is something that is very wrong. I like to play guitar. So, <coughs> guitar, so, uh, I think it originated from Spain, uh, Malaga region. I guess. I have no idea. I don't know if I into it. What is the difference between guitar and violin? So guitar, violin, like you require this stick-like instrument to play. Guitar, you can play with your fingers. <coughs> right now, you were talking about uh, international migrations. Yes, sir. And that uh, problem of uh, <coughs> national register. Yes, sir. India is partnered with to its 
neighbors like Pakistan about the water yes, is of the World Bank. Yes, sir. Uh, now we are thinking of uh, pulling out of industry for trading. Yes, sir. Do you think it is justified? And uh, if yes, how? If not, why? Sir, uh, it is. I, I don't think it is justified. Because I don't think like our relationship has escalated to an extent wherein we get into this water war. Because water is a basic human need, and this will only make uh, the people who are poor, who have nothing to do with the uh, interests of both both the countries, will suffer. I think this uh, kind of tactics should be used at the most extreme of case, wherein it has escalated to a situation wherein the those country, those two countries, they cannot exist together. If that is the case, I think uh, this route can be taken. Otherwise, uh, I don't think this route is justified as of now. If you water treaty is for use of extra water yes, that sir. we are entitled to yes, sir. use yes, sir. Uh, as per the treaty. Yes, sir. And that is what only we are saying that we want to use what we are entitled to yes, rather than giving it to Pakistan. Yes, is that wrong? Sir, it is not wrong. It is not wrong. That means that pulling out of that treaty is not wrong. So pulling out of the treaty, it sends a very wrong signal. To, to, to the extent of uh, the water being used as per the treaty. So that, that would not be wrong, like as far as technicalities are concerned. But from the human perspective, I think we need to be more considerate. Given our history as a more human country, which has been more considerate to its neighbor, I think we require to be more considerate. Do you think that we need to be all be water for, for the culture, for the people? Yes, sir, definitely. But uh, the, the, the specific uh, treaty we are talking about, industry, the, I don't think like we have much much of a problem as far as agricultural needs are concerned in that region, which which are part of the country right now, as far as that river is concerned, sir. Otherwise, other rivers, uh, yes, like we are in a need, we are in a deficit as far as water is concerned. So we can bring water from Indus? To our viewers, that, so that, that, that is useful, but that is not feasible in my understanding because for that we have to clear lots of forested lands, settlements has to be destroyed, and people have to be resettled. It is economically very expensive also, and also it will uh, put extra harm to the people on the way, and also the flora and fauna. Okay, and you did your uh, engineering in uh, civilian. Yes, sir. Why do you think you should shift to administrative services from engineering? Sir, uh, civil, uh, civil services was the, always there in the back of my mind. But then like I was the first graduate in the whole of my clan. So they all said like I should graduate in civil engineering, engineering specifically. So I gave in to that thought. I did my engineering with purpose. Uh, like I dedicated myself. But then I, after my graduation, I realized my calling has come for civil services and I inquired into all the subjects and I think I thought public administration was the one that I connected the most. What do you think you would achieve by being a civil servant? Sir, like my primary motive is like there are different factors. Uh, first, it would give me a settled economy <coughs> life. It would, give, it, it would settle my life. Then it would give me an opportunity to bring change in the people's life. And also it would allow me to meet different people which I like and interact, understand their problem. And probably if I possible, I can bring changes also, if I am able to work in my full capacity. How would you do that? Sir, uh, being from my region, I see that the biggest problem with the administrators, especially at the field, is that they, have, uh, like they, they often fail to connect with the people. Like there is this sense of elitism is there, like there's, there is this closed, uh, that is, uh, the notion attached with bureaucracy, that it, it is a closed system and people often tend to behave in that manner. Uh, the first and foremost, my idea is to connect with the people, to speak to them, or make it open that people are able to bring their problems to me and I, I am able to understand their problem, talk to them. If you understand the problem, I think the half of the task is done because most of the time like, you don't understand the problem, you implement, implement the policy, but the policy is not acceptable to the people. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Please tell me uh, how many terrorist organizations are working in Arunachal Pradesh? Terrorist organization, uh, none from Arunachal, but uh, in the border of three districts, there is uh, T 
TCL we call Changlang Lohit and Tirap. So there is no terrorist activity in Arunachal itself? No sir, like from Nagaland, Canadian Kaplan. They are, they are not operating in Arunachal? They are operating in three, three districts. Yes. That is uh, bordering uh, Nagaland, that is uh, Tirap, Changlang and uh, Longding district. Okay. In the Patkai region. And they, they are getting support from this country? From uh, uh, they are most of them, they, like most of the terrorist organizations in the North they are getting support uh, from uh, non-state actors and state actors uh, probably uh, Myanmar. Myanmar right now I don't think they are supporting anymore because the regime has changed. But China, yes, discreetly, it is said that they are getting support from China. Then there, there is this problem of narcotic trade within the region, which is a big factor in the revenue. Are you aware that there is some activity, surgical strike type, that India has conducted in Germany? Yes, India has recently, uh, recently in recent two years back, they have conducted one. So how report. do they now that uh, the activities have escalated or the gone down? Uh, activities in the Northeast, it has come by, it has like, uh, from years, it has come down constantly but quite recently it has started because the Kaplan group, Tennessee Kaplan group, they have uh, they have started their these attacks. You are staying in Delhi or, or you are coming yes, to I, uh, on and off. Like for my, usually I come for my means. But your father working there in Arunachal? My father is working there in Arunachal. Delhi. In Arunachal. So what are the problems of uh, basically the the challenges before the police or the administration in Arunachal? Police, sir, uh, I feel like, can I answer it from the theoretical perspective? Mm -hmm. Since I am a student of public administration, I want to use it. So I feel like uh, the system in uh, systems change uh, uh, as a process, like to, through a continuous process. But in our state, what happened is that the economic system, uh, it evolved faster than the social system. Because of uh, what happened, like people had money, but the, but the social system is uh, like not uh, bad because of which there is corruption, where there is lawlessness. The sense of rule of law is not there because of that. Because the economic system has uh, grown very fast because the center has been sending uh, lots of uh, funds to the state for development. But it has not been utilized properly to improve the social system in education, health, etc. Because of which uh, the corruption increased, uh, because of which there is a sense of uh, disregard to rule of law in some of the region also in fact. You must be aware that uh, Arunachal Pradesh is governed by the bureaucracy of beauty cutters. Yes sir. You must be aware of that, right? So how do you rate it? Is it should be continuing going on the same way or you prefer that the state administration should have its own cutter, own officers? Sir, I think uh, we should continue with this uh, same cutter system because it offers like uh, uh, <coughs> different officers, different, I would not use the term officers, different civil servants from the other states to come in and operate in the state and they like we are like accessible to best of minds because of the <coughs> okay. And I don't think like our administrative system, especially Arunachal, has not grown up to an extent that we can have our own cadre or, or we can manage our own cadre. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, one very interesting thing is uh, that it is though you know not too densely populated. Yes, sir. It has one of the highest linguistic densities in the world. Yes, yes. Right. So, what are the reasons like? It's peculiar. So the the mo most important factor is the migration migrationary pattern, because the people have migrated to like different regions, different parts, and wherever they have migrated, especially uh, those those tribes who have migrated to the close of Assam to the plains. They have like this lang linguistic variation closely attached, uh, closely connected with SMS people. Then those people who have migrated to other side, uh, like to the top of the hills, their their language pattern is different, and that is one of the reason. But our natural terrain is not too hospitable, right? Like yes, terrain is inviting. Like. Yes, terrain is difficult, but then like new roads have been built, mm -hmm. and now I think uh, like it is emerging as a very good tourist destination. And in Arunachal, you are from Nahar Lagoon, right? Nahar Lagoon, yes, sir. Can you give me like three reasons to visit Nahar Lagoon? Uh, three reasons. First, the weather. Sorry? Weather. 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 weather is very pleasant. Then, uh, if you are from Delhi, like you'll have won't have the problem of pollution. 
religion will not be there and uh, walking is the best thing i think like when if you are there in arlan you always want to walk because <coughs> every house is close by to the river and you by the river front you can walk and like trekking trekking opportunities are there and there are different festivals which are organized uh, regularly that attracts tourists from across the world and you have a background also in business you mentioned yes sir like i do business on and off so uh, what is it that you know the public sector can learn from the private sector uh, public sector first the corporate ethos the discipline needs to be learned uh, and uh, the problem of files file movement that is we say the slow static st statism that is there in bureaucracy it has to change it has to move faster we need to be more uh, like more coming out from the right depths and that is one of the biggest factor that is stopping the public sector to do its maximum uh, you know the recently uh, icici ceo chanda kochar she was indicted by a internal committee yes sir right? so the issue of ethics in corporate governance yes, that sir. is also very much there in the private sector Yes, sir. So, what do you think? Like, how can that be addressed? Uh, sir, like uh, for that ma for that regard, I think the recently Kotak committee was appointed, and they have given their uh, feedbacks in, the, in this regard. I think uh, so some of the feedbacks can be applied. So, uh, what are those? Can you share? Uh, recommendation one, sir. I don't exactly remember all the de details of the recommendation. I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, what I remember is that regular audit, I guess. they talked about regular audit and they talked about independent directors to one of which should be a lady member something like that sir i don't remember exactly all the details mm -hmm. all right one last question uh, on swachh bharat abhiyan yes sir so how is the cleanliness situation in your state sir i think like swachh bharat abhiyan i think it has worked wonders especially in my region okay. because people are willingly participating earlier what used to happen is that people used to dump their uh, garbages outside their houses and it was not a worry but now what happened like since uh, like the uh, the abhiyan has uh, come in the campaign has come in people are willingly participating they are understanding the need of cleanliness in their uh, in their vicinity or neighborhood i think uh, it has working but still the problem is there because, because and more because uh, rather the problem is because right now is because of financial incapacity Uh, like the, our our municipal that is uh, council that is there it is not earning much so they are not able to spend also but like back, compared to like what was there in 3 4 years back it has like definitely worked wonders the main issue if you look at it like from a all india perspective yes, is it lack of infrastructure so rather like why people are defecating in urban so like it is rather because of the attitudinal problem because the, the like we can create infrastructure like india being one of the fastest growing economy we are capable of creating toilets building toilets but until and unless like there is willingness from the people uh, to uh, like openly or like uh, like regularly participate in the campaign i don't think it would be as, as successful as the government would want it, it to be so how do you bring about that attitude real change i think uh, the uh, the regular campaigns tv ads are important the endorsement from celebrities are important and the most important thing would be to like decentralize the whole idea let the gram sabhas and the uh, area sabhas or the area committees let them handle it let them create awareness because they are the, the democracy that is or the government closest to the people and people would be more connected <coughs> okay thanks thank you sir great experience 30 minutes with you wait for 5 minutes yes, and sir. we'll call you back okay thank you sir